what since then and, 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 and it's just one of those things that I think let's just concentrate on how Sam as a zombie lives and functions <coughs> in this world well would you count the fly because that takes the whole movie but <coughs> oh yeah no totally I would totally count the fly yeah yeah absolutely yeah well, what's a dum 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 bullet um, dum dum bullet is uh, a zombie bullet it's a hollow tip bullet that they use to um, that they use to uh, remove every part of a zombie's brain whenever they shoot it Oh, like a rhino bullet. Okay, awesome. Basically, yeah. yeah. Well, right. just, and we actually do oh, see them being used. So. But just bridging off that idea of uh, just talking about the action, um, it, it, from the look of what we've seen, it's very. It, you seem to mix a lot of genres in it, yeah. action, comedy, part. Where would you say? What would you say is the most predominant? Or would uh, you? The most. I, you know, it's really. We, I was talking earlier um, to somebody about like that balance, and the balance is always so hard. I mean, you look at movies like Shaun of the Dead and like Zombieland, and I think that they nail that tone. And when you shoot, you try to like say, okay, it's going to be like forty percent action, forty percent humor, twenty percent horror, whatever it is. Um, and then you get to editorial, and all of a sudden you have to start worrying about those percentages growing and shrinking. And so um, I really wanted to focus on on the action comedy aspect of it. I just thought that that was and the comedy the comedy wasn't played for like fart joke humor. It was always I always found like when you take something like um, action or monsters or any kind of horror, and then you add funny into it, the funny somehow translates to fun, and that's really what what the biggest thing I was after was just to do something that you just walk out of but that was like a really fun movie it's, it's not trying to be Underworld it's not trying to be constant. I mean that's been done and they've done it well and let them do that this is just something completely different I just want to have audiences leave like you did after Monster Squad and like, that was just a lot of fun you, you've referenced sort of like the difference between how the perception in the Italian perception and the American perception when you're uh, working on a project like that is there something about idiom and, and making it more palatable to an American audience is there, some, is there something about in, what in the switch of the tone yeah. um, is there some are there things choices that you had to make to make it more palatable to no, an American none audience of the yeah, none of the choices were actually made to appeal to an audience I, I just because that's such a moving target you never know I mean, it's like 3D. All of a sudden, like everybody, with them we've been dealing with the, you know, any other project I've been developing over the past year, you know, uh, Alice in Wonderland comes out and everyone's like, it has to be in 3D. It has to be future proof. It has to be. And then Mars Needs Mom comes out and tanks, and they're like, oh, 3D, it just might be dead. And you're like, really? Like in a year? So, um, so hitting uh, audience expectations is always really hard. So, to me, it was just those decisions were what I saw in the comic book. And, and, um, I think the differences between, say, a comic book and a film is a comic is a very active experience. Like, you are actively filling in the blanks what happens between this panel and this panel. And whenever the guy has all caps that he's yelling, like, you're the one in your head saying, this is how loud he's yelling, and whatever it is. Whereas movies are very passive. I'm saying, this is how loud he's yelling, because I mixed it over at Skywalk or something, and that's, you know, whatever. <laughs> and so, as a result, like, it's, it's always really hard to do that. And so, this is, this is a take, and this is the take that we have on the material, and, and so it wasn't really yeah for anything audience wise it was really just to make me laugh. How hard is it on the rules to have all the different monsters in one scenario? A lot easier than you'd think. It was really cool because the way that we basically set it up is that um, we we uh, we did the American version of the story in this in the sense that we've learned in the comic books what happened in Europe. But here basically all of these as as America was growing and we had immigrants coming on ashore, they were vampires and werewolves and zombies all mixed up in that group. And they all basically had this. It's almost like biker gangs, you know. They're really badass, but at the end of the day, they have their code. And they're actually safer because they have their code. You don't have to worry about ever getting attacked by a Hells Angels biker because they want nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? And so um, so then the idea being that whenever um, they would get out of line, there was always somebody who was a sort of impartial inspector that would come in and sort of settle things and then end up being villain. And so, um, so it was really, um, th there's, there's quite a bit of, circles not mixing with each other but the way it's presented in the film and there's a lot of tension between for instance like even vampires and zombies or vampires and werewolves um, zombies sort of are the, the name tag wearing sort of faction of, of society and so everything we shot was with vampire with the, the zombies was all very like fluorescent and green and sickly looking and even our zombie support group and what I really loved is that going back to the transformation thing is that the movie's not about how cool and flashy all that stuff can be. It's more like how if you're really a zombie and you get to learn this through um, Sam's character and you wake up in a shopping cart and you know you find out that you're a living dead, um, how do you live? How do you survive without rotting like any other zombie? And if you don't eat human flesh, how do you survive? And, and all those things. And, and that was the stuff that was really interesting. What, what sort of monster tropes are passe in Dylan Dog? Like, you know, well, vampires don't do that anymore. Like, what sort of things, like, rules did you set oh, up for your monsters? Um, 
the rules, you know, we just really stuck to a really classic setup. Is I just didn't really feel the need to reinvent it that much because I think it's it's you get to a point where it, that it's so um, it's so inherent in the culture. I mean, you probably could grab like a seven or eight year old and ask them if they're vampire like sunlight or not, and they just know, you know. And so again, with this, as I just didn't, I didn't think that the the origins of all the monsters was as important as how they interact with each other and how they learn to live in our world. So really, it was more the expose of the other side of it. You know, not saying like, oh, they can live and sparkle or whatever. Um, but like, here's how they actually go out and eat, or here's how they manage to eat and not get caught. You know. As a monster movie fan yourself, yeah. uh, what were the, I guess, the scenes that were most fun to shoot? Was it like werewolves or vampires or something else? No, I was saying, uh, I was saying to somebody else that I, I just anytime there was like a monster on set, I was just giddy beyond belief. I was just like, I just get happy and clap. And it's just like, it just, it just, it was cool because it was like, you know, like Brian Steele walks out and he's like seven and a half feet, eight feet tall. And like, that's badass. That's so great. So anytime there was something with, with that, it just felt like it was, it was, it was, it was very easy to get out of bed that day to go to work. So it was whenever we had to actually have just two people talking. That was the most important. Excellent. It's the Dylan dog. Can you guys have one more? Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Just Thanks. Say, I'm sorry. My 19 year old son thinks that your TMNT is. The best incarnation, and he's very oh, frustrated cool. there hasn't been another one. That's cool. Well, <laughs> he I, wanted me to I get that too. out there. He wanted I am too. I had a deal to write the second one, so there you go. I'm just as frustrated. <laughs> 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 <laughs>